in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. And he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins, saying, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I is coming. And the next day a carpenter from Nazareth, known as Jesus, approached the river. John saw him and gave testimony, saying, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. divinity through words and deeds. Yet the truth eluded many, even his chosen few. Who do you say I am? Jesus finally asked his disciples. Prophetic promises joined divine revelation as Peter suddenly cried, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. with the eyes of those long oppressed. And as the Nazarene made his way toward the gates of Jerusalem that final week, the people hailed him as the earthly king they hoped he would be.
gates of Jerusalem burst open. There was a blur of palm branches and a deafening roar. Acclamation and cries for deliverance became one as the crowd shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the King! He's coming in the Lord's holy name! and noise of the days that followed. Tables and temples were overturned. Men in authority argued and conspired. Promises loudly sworn around an evening meal became whispered betrayals and denials. And there, in the midst of this turbulent storm, a man stood silent before his accusers. Tell us, the chief priest said, are you the son of God? Jesus answered, it is as you say. Why do you need any more testimony, they cried. We have heard it from his own lips. And the whole assembly rose and led Jesus to Pilate. Centuries of prophecy had come down to three years, and now three years had come down to three days. This is how the first day began. One balcony, two men, and a tempestuous crowd. People of Jerusalem, cried Pilate, behold the man. 
What shall I do with the one you call the King of the Jews? cried Pilate. Crucify him! Crucify him! Is this what you would have me do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? Crucify him! Crucify the crowd erupted, him. shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate cried, Shall I crucify your king? Crucify him! Crucify him! The crowd shouted, We have no king but Caesar! The sentence had been rendered. The condemned man was mocked and beaten. A rope of thorns was pressed into his brow. A blood-stained robe was around his shoulders. And as the first day slowly turned darker, Jesus began his final journey. Upon his back he carried two crude pieces of wood and the sins of a grieving world. Oh, no.
The road ended at Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there on that dark and violent Friday, they crucified Jesus Christ. It was the third hour when his cross was raised, the sixth hour when a chilling darkness consumed the land, and finally, in the ninth hour, a dying voice called out to a vacant sky, My God, why have you forsaken me?
lifeless body of Jesus Christ was taken from the cross and wrapped in fresh linen. It was laid in a new stone tomb, and a large rock was moved to seal the entrance. The day that had begun with a crowd screaming for an execution would finally end at a silent grave. The next day must have dawned gray and sunless. How can we imagine the hopelessness of that Saturday? How can we fathom the despair of a faith that has died? Jesus' followers were either immobilized by grief or hiding in fear. His accusers rushed to seal the tomb more securely. And on that second day, death appeared to have claimed the final victory. What would our world have become if it had all ended that day? What if Sunday had never come? Sunday did come, and the sun began to rise. Sunday did come, and the stone rolled away. Sunday did come, and the tomb was empty. Singing that we can. 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that same power that raised Christ from the grave has also raised us allowing us to stand without shame before the throne of grace. For we know that our old self was crucified with Christ, and just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too may live a new life. When I think of all my faults and all my failures, when I consider all the times I've let God down, I am humbled by the grace He has extended. I'm amazed at the mercy I have found. I could never earn love on my own. Yet every time I come before His throne, I stand beneath. to change the world. And now the fourth day and each day after belongs to us. May we boldly carry Friday's cross and proclaim Sunday's message to a lost world still living on Saturday. It took three days to change the world, but it only takes one prayer to change someone's eternity. In the light of Him. 
His mercy, and I. Want 